Cardiovascular remodeling, what does it mean? Yeah, that's a good question. Uh, and uh, cardiovascular disease is the major killer in the world. And it affects both the heart and, and the vessels. And uh, when it comes to the vessels, it mainly means that we have hypertrophy of, uh, for example, the vessel wall, meaning that you have a higher resistance. That is uh, relevant for hypertension, for example. But it could also mean that the heart have been remodeled. It could be thicker wall as well. It could also be fibrosis. And these have huge implications for example, heart failure. And so, so cardiovascular remodeling is, is a very broad term. It means the many aspects. And we think that uh, the most important ones are the hypertrophy of the, the muscle in the vessel wall or the heart. It's fibrosis. It is um, inflammation as a part. And many believe that, for example, atherosclerosis is an inflammatory disease. So that's huge, huge implications for all our um, many manifestations of cardiovascular disease, myocardial infarction, heart failure, atrial fibrillation, stroke. And mentioning atrial fibrillation, there are some very interesting observations related to HDAC inhibition in atrial fibrillation, because there are experimental studies showing that, for example, in a model of atrial fibrillation, that HDAC inhibition, and in this case I talk about VPA or valproic acid, can prevent not only the atrial fibrillation per se, but also the enlargement of the atrium, the fibrotic uh, involvement in the atrium, as well as the thrombotic uh, development in the atrium, that could lead to a stroke. So if you think about this and the implications for the clinic, that would be that an HDAC inhibitor could be the perfect prevention of stroke in atrial fibrillation. HDAC inhibitors have been around for a long time and uh, there are lots of uh, different publications, experimental studies that HDAC inhibition can have huge implications in cardiovascular disease. The, I think the most studied of them all is the valproic acid or VPA. But a couple of years I went through the literature and I could find that HDAC inhibition in, in um, a more general sense, and for VPA in particular, have implications for both inflammation, fibrosis, proliferation, and thrombosis. So if you think about it and see cardiovascular remodeling in cardiovascular disease as a, a main feature, HDAC inhibition would fit quite nicely into that and the pathophysiology of cardiovascular disease. So HDAC inhibitors have been used in cancer, have uh, been effective in uh, proliferation of tum tumorous uh, diseases. But in cardiovascular, it's always novel to use HDAC inhibition. And uh, Sereno have caught that, meaning that we develop HDAC inhibition for cardiovascular disease. And we have identified several areas which could be of huge interest, and that is both atrial fibrillation and prevention of stroke. It is uh, heart failure and, and remodeling of the heart. It is thrombosis, which is a uh, a huge uh, area of importance for cardiovascular disease, but it's also kidney disease that have fibrosis. So given the different aspects of HDAC inhibition 
anti-inflammatory, antifibrotic, uh, reverse remodeling, antithrombotic, and blood pressure lowering, not the least, which is a huge part of cardiovascular disease development. This could have implications for many, many patients in the future. Sereno have focused on two areas of HDAC inhibition in cardiovascular disease, and that is thrombosis, that is prevention of thrombosis, and treatment of pulmonary arterial hypertension. I mean, I think that the, the main implication, and that is the, 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 what people want to see with HDAC inhibition in PRH, is that it could be a disease-modifying therapy. And what we mean with that is that VPA, as the HDAC inhibitor, could reverse the primary vascular changes that is the cause of PRH. Uh, in that way, change the, the course of the disease. And that terminology that has been coined for that is disease-modifying therapy.